in times of doubt. I shall keep faith. Right, hello guys, Lynn here. I am back, and we're still talking about the aesthetics of Dawn of War 3. People are still on about this, and I guess with fair reason, there's not a great deal of information about some of the other elements and mechanics in the game at this point, so people are focusing on that as a thing to talk about. But I still personally don't really get the issue. Uh, people seem to be really freaking out about this still. I'm still getting comments all the time on my other videos, and you know, personally, from my first video, people were talking, saying about the brightness, the colours, it's too much colour, it's not dark enough. And then when I posted my next video saying how stupid that was and highlighting why it didn't really matter, um, suddenly people changed tack and suddenly, no, it wasn't that. It was about the aesthetics, it was about the, the animation, the animation, the movement of the units. Now, personally, if you look at this right here, you can see the Eldar move very differently to the Space Marines, but do they really move differently than what we have seen in previous Dawn of War? That's the key question. Well, what I've tried to do here is I've tried to get gameplay from Dawn of War, Dawn of War 2, and also the E3 stuff we've got here of Dawn of War 3, put them side by side. Not an easy thing to do because you're trying to kind of slice down through the gameplay to sort of have a little look-see. But I've got, you know, a couple of minutes here of gameplay that I've, uh, you know, put together to try and highlight how that unit movement goes. And I think you will agree that it really isn't very different from previous Dawn of War. And this is the thing that I'm talking about, okay? It's all very well for people to continually sort of come into videos at the moment and be like, oh, it's rubbish, it's rubbish, it's rubbish. But is it? Are you really looking back at that gameplay? Well, check it out. Now, originally I wasn't going to narrate over this part and just leave the gameplay to speak for itself, but I think I will just to draw attention. So you can see on the left we've got the original Dawn of War. See how static the gunplay there is? And compare that to Dawn of War 3. See how that is very, very similarly? In the middle here, look look at that. See the two Howling Banshees? See in Dawn of War 2 and Dawn of War 3 how when the Howling Banshees are sprinting, they're moving almost identically. They move very, very similarly. Also, look at the colours going on here. Now, if you actually look at Dawn of War 3 and compare it to Dawn of War 2, you can really see that there is a lot of darkness there. Now look, here's the thing. Yes, there is a lot more detail in the ground texture of Dawn of War 2, but the environment of Dawn of War 3 is like this snowy arctic space, so therefore the ground is already going to look pretty plain. And I would very much imagine that when they eventually show us some other maps and gameplay there, that we're going to see the same kind of texturing and detail that we have in Dawn of War 2. Now also, again, look at the animations and the movement of the Dreadnoughts here. Look at these Space Marines coming in on Dawn of War 3. You know, they're lumbering in, they're moving across. It really is very comparable. Again, look over onto the Dawn of War 1, okay? Dawn of War on the far left-hand side. Look how those Space Marines are moving around here. Almost a bit more kind of higgledy-piggledy all over the place. They're not really moving as a coherent unit. And I actually think that's a, a big positive change that's happened in Dawn of War 3 and you can see the way in which they move together seems more as a unit. Now obviously in this pre-alpha footage of Dawn of War 3 everything seems much more full-on chaotic. There's a huge amount of units there and I think that's that's the drive that they're going for in Dawn of War 3. But again look at the battle I've got going on on the original Dawn of War on the left hand side. There's plenty of shooting and action going on there but it's just you know, it's it's more sort of enclosed. Look at the amazing assault units going in here on Dawn of War 3 and how they're getting in the mix. But look at the Eldar. See how you got those back lines that are just standing back there firing? The front lines here, the guys moving in. The Dreadnought is like charging forward in the background here. Look into Dawn of War 2 here. See how the Banshees are coming in on the Ogrens. And uh, look, here we are. So they've got some guys. I'm pushing the final base. And these guys here. And you've got Solaria coming in on Dawn of War 3. Now there is a hell of a lot more fire going in on this Dawn of War 3 trailer and it actually occurred to me today I'm not entirely sure whether this Dawn of War 3 the pre-alpha E3 stuff here is is greatly representative because you've got a very big battle happening there now I think that we will see a lot of big battles in Dawn of War 3 but at the same time I think that seeing that level of combat I don't think that should be your kind of benchmark you know I think you need to sort of look back and look at the sort of original Dawn of War and sort of say okay well you know we've got huge battles happening here on Dawn of War 3 but I think that you know you need to measure that not every situation you're going to play is going to be this level of units and so i think that you'll see a more balanced movement um 
but yeah, as I was saying, you know, if you look at the banshees, right, and you look at those howling banshees, those are the ones that I think specifically you notice the movement of the most. And uh, the, the banshees, like I said, if you look at that moment back where I had the on Dawn of War 2 and Dawn of War 3 together, you really see those banshees moving almost identically. And here's the thing as well, I think some people are kind of looking at the way the Eldar are moving and thinking, man, that, that looks kind of like they're floating, it looks kind of like they're, you know, they're not really engaging with the ground, it looks like they're kind of just shush, shush, shush. In it. And I, I know what people are talking about. I know what people are talking about with League, because those kind of NPC units in League, they kind of do move like that, they kind of float across the ground, they don't really sit and engage with the ground. And again, you can kind of see that here, and actually some of those units in the middle there, the way they're moving. Eldar are naturally light-footed and ethereal, you know, they're very kind of sort of wispy, floaty, you know, because that's the style of that unit, okay, they're supposed to be like that. Whereas the Space Marines are much more clunky and heavy and they're like, brum, brum, brum. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that we're s you can physically see this here. Now, another thing that people are talking about are, the, are these cover systems, right? This was another big thing that people are picking up. And um, I I'm just tying that into the actual movement sort of discussion here. The sort of the power of movement. Just because it's kind of, you know... I think when people are talking about the movement as well, they're also talking about the cover in terms of sort of move, stop, move, stop. Now, those sort of cover points... Um, can obviously be fully destroyed. We see this happening, look over, you know, as the guys are firing and Solaria brings missile pods down and so on, right? But here's the thing, it's like, it seems to me like when you're watching this gameplay, again, look, look, see how those assault wings drop straight into that cover point. So the guys can capture this stuff. And I think it ties into more just the kind of style of gameplay that they're going for. I mean, going back to Dawn of War 2 and when I was playing that and looking at the cover system there, yes, of course, that cover system had strong benefits. And also looking at Dawn of War, the original, the, the more simplified cover system that existed there. But I would even go so far as to suggest that Dawn of War 2 was more of an RTT than an RTS. And that with Dawn of War 3, they're pushing pushing back towards those RTS routes we had with Dawn of War the original. You know, the style of gameplay in Dawn of War 2 is very different to what they're going for in Dawn of War 3, completely different. You know, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to put that whole cover system in place if it's going to have a very sort of uh, minimal actual usage in the game. Having these kind of larger uh, control points is actually perhaps better in terms of sort of just holding specific areas of the map and it probably enables them to actually put those down. Now whether or not you'll be able to construct those I don't know. There's probably going to be a load of stuff that we're going to find out that we haven't got information on right now. But what I'm trying to say is I think people just need to calm down and sort of try and look at this as a whole picture instead of just looking at something and going that sucks. Again look at those assault marines getting into that cover point you know and, and I see this working. I really do. And I think people are just making way too much of a fuss. But tell me your thoughts down below, guys. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.